Hi. Um, I thought today I'd show you some pictures that I've done and explain how they were done. Uh, we're going to special. I was a car specialist for quite a long time. Cars in the studio as well as outside. Now cars in the studio are a different sort of problem, although it's very similar to photographing a silver cigarette case. But I'll get on and I'll show you. You might be surprised at some of the techniques that we used but they're, they're still applicable today in this level of advertising photography because people try and get the shot perfect without retouching even today. Let's get on. Well, we'll start, I'll show you one or two pictures that I've done. Um, now we'll start with this Jeep shot. It's virtually the final image. It'll probably be one of the tests I did. But um, that's how people think about car photography in the studio. Now this one's got no retouching on it yet, um, there will be a little going to be done, but not a lot. So this is about the level that photographers would shoot at uh, today, even with digital. Now all the shots I'm going to show you were shot on film, in fact, on large format film, 10x8 transparencies. Now they'd be shot on a digital back on a large format 5x4 camera. Here's another pretty standard shot. It was, was retouched on computer, but again shot on uh, 10 by 8 transparency. The car hasn't been retouched at all, apart from the shadow. And of course, the man standing there was, uh, was retouched. Uh, all the pictures put in separately. Now I've scanned all these images, uh, especially for the video, so I haven't um, bothered to take out dust, etc. So don't, uh, don't count that against me, please. Now cars would still be shot on painted backgrounds. This one was painted blue for this shot. Um, it would be shot on, well it looks a bit strange because of the video, but it really is uh, a standard blue. Um, now this background would be changed and painted virtually for every shot, depending uh, on what the car was and what the client wanted. Now it wouldn't be the first time I've let a light uh, fall on a car. I've photographed many of them. I didn't let one fall on this. Um, this car was insured for nearly three million pounds. Um, so you have to have some powerful insurance as well when you're doing this type of work. Now in the 20 years I was shooting cars, I probably shot over 2,000 cars, different cars. Um, the thing to bear in mind is you can have accidents and in that 20 years I wrote off uh, probably around 12, 14 cars in my career, um, mainly accidents outside but um, one of them was in the studio. But I'll do another video on the disasters that have happened over the years. Well it's a bit about time we got down to the nitty gritty, let's see how this was done. Um, this is a pretty standard picture. It had to look like it was in a test uh, centre, a uh, wind machine and uh, going through water. It was, a, it was a graphic illustration that the client wanted. So this is the setup in the studio. Now, I know a lot of you will have heard that a very big light box above the car is the best way of shooting it. Well, I don't think so. This is the more difficult way of doing it, and more difficult means more money. Now, we made an enormous white panel that we hang from pulleys above. Now, that gives me the possibility of being able to twist the panel and have it in any position I want. But the twisting of the panel allows a different sort of light. You can make it fall off as you want. Now, you'll see under the car there's a type of swimming pool. Well, it's just plastic against wood and then filled with water. Now, you notice the car doesn't actually sink into the water, so the car is slightly put up on blocks and the water would be dyed black so you don't see the plastic through it. Now for the darker reflections in the car, I'd use black felt and you can see on the left hand side of this image the beginning of the left felt of the black felt that would be running of the whole length of the studio, causing the darker line in the car. And if we wanted a really intense red, we could use um, red red material, or if a blue car, blue material. Uh, now, for example, a red car, I remember that Alfa Romeo used to love that. Now, once put in place, the, where I like the reflection, the white panel would be lit by one and two kilowatt, uh, kilowatt tungsten lights. I always would shoot this type of shot in tungsten light. Because the positioning is critical, one or two centimetres movement can change everything. 
As a matter of interest, the blue line above the car was done by just cutting a slit in a black card, lighting behind it with a blue gel, and then double exposing with another 10 by 8 camera. So we'd have two 10 by 8 cameras sitting next to each other, uh, one shining on the black card and one on the car. And we just take the chassis out with the film in it, out of one camera, slide it into the other and double expose. That's how we got around retouching in those days. Now here's the same campaign, it's for the water test. Now, it would still be shot like this, I promise you. There would be very little digital. This was shot just like this, building a set in a studio. Um, and that's how we did it. I mean, we had a drain, we had everything, and here's how it, how it was. Here's a wider, um, wider angle of it, so you can see. Now there's a white panel just hanging from the ceiling that uh, will throw a little light in just the front of that uh, of the bonnet. Above the car there will be another big panel hanging down being lit again by two kilowatt spots and one kilowatt spots. Black felt just in front of the car making the front of the car nice and dark underneath. Now this type of shot would still be shot like this. Um, I can't imagine trying to retouch that but um, Anyway, the photographer doesn't want to retouch. He wants to get it right. After all, he's getting paid per, per day. And this would have been a four-day shoot. Now, this is another shot in the series. Now, this is a real garage door that was put up in the studio and the car lit in the same way. This is a shot that's very, very typical. Um, and I'm going to show you how, how to light cars. Um, a quick sort of 10-second lesson that really takes years to learn. But we'll get on. Now, the important thing to know is that only the background would have been retouched. The car would have to be delivered 100%, as it would now. Retouching would still only be used now for creative um, purposes or solving little problems that really can't be solved photographically. Don't forget, the guys doing this are getting paid thousands of pounds a day. Um, and they couldn't possibly justify having it all retouched afterwards. So now we'll go through it bit by bit. I mean, here's a car, we've raised it off the ground onto a table. Now, you might think, why? Well, it's a lot easier to get light bouncing up from underneath the car, and on top of that, I don't have to lie on the floor looking through a camera for about the two days or three days it's going to take to take this picture. Now, you'll notice the black material that I'm pointing out on the top left, that black material is causing this black reflection in the bonnet and the black reflection down the windscreen. You'll see I've overlit the top of that black material. Now what that's doing is causing this white line just above, this rather nice white line. Now that makes a nice reflection. And the whole car would be treated like that. Um, these side reflections, um, we're looking at the side of the car now, um, in the window would be a black piece of material hanging on the wall making that reflection. That same black material would be making the line down the car. Now this is where compromises always appear in car photography. Now you'll notice there is no light pointing directly at the car. That's a real no-no for me in car, car photography. Everything is bounced. These lights on the right-hand side, we can just see, are two kilowatt spots reflecting or shining onto the wall that is reflecting into the car. Now, that's how I would light a car all around. Now, you can see in the windows on the side of the car that you get a bright line that goes off to a darker well, more with no reflection on the window and that's very simply by cutting down the two kilowatt spot with a barn door and making that nice sort of running off from bright to darker light and the whole car was lit like that it, it would take a long time there is no doubt that this is how that first Jeep shot was shot this was a series of five shots so the whole thing would have been about two and a half weeks work now this one was shot in an enormous film studio. It was lit, if I remember, with a 20 kilowatt cinema um, spotlight. 
and to cause the shadow on the people, etc. Um, probably uh, fill in light from the left. Now, that road was laid in the studio. We laid plastic down and then tarmac on top and then painted the white lines. Sorry, the yellow lines. Now, why studio here, you say? Well, that's my decision. I'm the photographer. I have the choice. And that's the important thing to remember. Now, how do I make that decision? Well, it's very simple. Look at all those people. How many days would they have to be on standby for me to get the right light? Uh, it could be days and days. On top of that, I would be on standby. I'm already booked for other shots the week after. But another thing that really might make the decision is the fact of the copy date. Now, if the client wants that picture in five days time, because he's booked a 40 square meter poster in the street and he has a copy date. Now that has to be respected and that might be the reason. Well, this is an interesting shot. It's a very old shot. Um, it's just to show you how retouching was done in the past. Now the, the mask around would have been cut by hand, the black mask, and the printer would take the white from there on. Um, around the wheels would all have been cut by hand and the shadow put back in but with a brush. Um, and you'll see that the wheels aren't particularly round in some situations. <laughs> now, the other thing you'll notice is that the wheels of the car are over exactly the same angle. Now, that was important in that era as well. But this was nearly a reshoot. And why was it nearly a reshoot? Look at the wheel weights. Now, those would have cost a fortune to have retouched. Luckily, the client uh, accepted it like that. Right, just to prove I was young once, uh, that's me sitting on the bonnet and with my cat. And on the right hand side, Gilles Mars, my art director, and kneeling on the floor, my ex-assistant, uh, Christophe Joubert, who's a wonderful photographer. You should Google him. He's a great advertising photographer, Christophe Joubert. On the right hand side is the guy um, with the leopard. Oh, so that's a lot of work, all that. Uh, well, I hope it's given you an idea and a look into uh, car photography in the studio. It was a bit of a serious video, wasn't it? Anyway, we'll see you soon. Itchyphoto.com. Don't, uh, itchyphoto Don't forget to upload some stuff. And we'll talk to you soon.